I think the Emergency Money for the People Act was probably the most uh, solid bill that we heard that was proposed by Senator Sanders, Harris, and Markey out of the Senate. I don't think that it's even going to see the light of day, the Emergency Money for the People Act, which would pay $2,000 per American per month um, with up to five people in the family, three dependents, with no age limit, no just them being a child as an age limit for dependency. So that would be t potential uh, $10,000 per month on under the Emergency Money for the People Act, and it would have been retroactive back to March. That, I think, is really what the Federal Reserve is talking about. That's what Jerome Powell is really saying, is that we need to spend more right now to battle this downturn. We've done all we can right now in, this, in, in the Federal Reserve, getting money into the hands of banks so that liquidity can, can continue, that mortgages can continue, that lending can continue, that Wall Street is happy and continue to trade and continue to grow because we're buying up municipal bonds, we're buying up junk bonds, we're you know even stretching our own constitutional ability inside the Federal Reserve doing things and pushing the limits of what we can do. Now it's time for Congress to put up or shut up and put something in place. And it's a great question. You know, why is Congress not speaking to the actual people? A mom and two kids asks in the chat. Because they live in a cloistered environment. They always have. They pay attention to special interests and those who get them elected and take care of them. That's why we have, you know, these members of Congress like Mitch McConnell who live there in perpetuity inside of this cloistered environment. But I think a second stimulus that is consistent and is retroactive is exactly what the Fed is call talking about having that $2,000 a month that would help families who are stuck at home, who have lost their job, can get money back into the economy. Remember that the GDP in this country is fueled by 70% of consumer spending. 70% of consumer spending it fuels this economy. And so when you're not spending anything, stores are closing, tax revenue is completely down. When the federal government's tax revenue for April was one-third of what they actually spent. One-third, the most in American history this last month. They spent over $3 trillion and they brought in about $1 trillion in tax revenue. That's because people aren't buying anything. That's because people aren't spending. So to get that money back into the hands of the American people helps the federal government refill its coffers. How are we gonna pay for Social Security? How are we gonna pay for any of these programs if we don't have we don't have the income coming in from the American people from spending and this GDP. We could see a major contraction. And so that is exactly what Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is talking about, is getting that additional money into the American people because one side of the economy is being taken care of right now by the Federal Reserve. The other half is crumbling because Congress can't get its act together. But the coronavirus crisis raises longer term concerns as well. The record shows that deeper and longer recessions can leave behind lasting damage to the productive capacity of the economy. Avoidable household and business insolvencies can weigh on growth for years to come. Long stretches of unemployment can damage or end workers' careers as their skills lose value and professional networks dry up and leave families in greater debt. Congress and frankly the White House can't get its act together, can't get on the same page. So this thing is molding and falling apart over here. This side, by the Federal Reserve, is doing fine. You know, Wall Street has its ups and downs here and there, but they're happy. They're happy that the Federal Reserve keeps coming in and grabbing up all these municipal bonds and things that they don't want to touch right now, buying up this debt, doing these other things that embolden Wall Street. And, by the way, putting as much money, you know, $4 trillion into the economy so that banks can continue to lend. Businesses can keep running. Construction can keep happening because we have an affordable housing crisis in this country. J.P. Morgan Chase just announced today 2,500 affordable homes they're going to build. Right now in this economy, big companies, they're building 2,500 affordable homes. We at my company are continuing to build. All right, here we are at one of our brand new construction duplexes. This is in West Texas. So this one just wrapped up. The other side is already rented. This side, it's a three bedroom, two bath. We'll rent for $13.99 a month on this side. Like I said, the other side is already rented. And if you look across the street over here, these are all sites that are gonna be built up here throughout, throughout this year. 
and this house along five down the block here are already completed. So come on in. You see some really nice high-end features in here that the team did. Because we have the liquidity, because we have the, we have the construction loans, we're able to do what we need to do to keep going. But what about you, the American people that are just being crushed right now? So yes, Republicans want to squabble with Democrats, want to squabble. What's in this bill? There's money for cannabis. There's this and that. Yes, it's always going to be like that. Cutting, you know, trying to eliminate this pork, the bridge to nowhere, the studying of a shrimp on a treadmill. Remember that famous video, the shrimp on a treadmill video? <laughs> yes, it's there. But at the heart of this is a Great Depression that we're now sitting in. And I believe Fed Chair Jerome Powell is exactly right that they need to spend more to battle this downturn. And what could the Federal Reserve do? You know, their powers are limited, right? They are limited to borrowing power. Um, they're not, they don't have the ability to spend. Recall though, that the Fed has lending powers, not spending powers. A loan from a Fed facility can provide a bridge across temporary interruptions to liquidity. And those loans will help many borrowers get through the current crisis. But the recovery may take some time to gather momentum and the passage of time can turn liquidity problems into solvency problems. Additional fiscal support could be costly, but worth it if it helps avoid long-term damage and leaves us with a stronger recovery. This trade-off is one for our elected representatives who wield powers of taxation and spending. So we heard from Jerome Powell yesterday talk about this issue and said, look, we, our hands are tied. We, as a, as a body, can only lend money. We're a lending institution, right? We keep the economy rolling by lending money but we can't spend, we can't just cut a check to the American people. But there is some word that they could, that because they've already stretched the rules so much as it is, that they could in fact uh, create a federal bank account for all of you, for all of us, that we would get a Fed account. And we would, it would be just like a normal checking account. We'd have our own you know, credit card, our own access to this account and they could set it up very quickly. According to experts, they could set this up for every American within a matter of days and fund the account the same way that they do for the banks. You know, if a big bank needs liquidity, they were able to do it like that. The same thing for the American people. So what, it, what would it look like to have a federal bank account that the Fed could put $2,000 per family member into that account every month like clockwork, like they do for the banks? Would you be on board with that? This is the type of liquidity that the Federal Reserve is talking about for the American people, the central bank. The White House wants the Federal Reserve to go to negative interest rates. They say, no, we don't have any appetite for that right now. I know that people get excited about the idea of negative interest rates. No, we're going to keep that interest rate as low as possible to keep borrowing costs down, to allow the American people to get access to this, to, you know, to buy properties to move, to get lending for their businesses and other things. But what about a federal bank account? I just find that, I find that idea fascinating. And I've never heard of this concept before, but it is an idea that's now starting to gain some traction. Will it actually happen? Doubtful. If Congress can make some moves here, the Federal Reserve won't have to do something drastic. But is the Fed gonna sit there and let the world's biggest economy collapse under the weight of this? because Congress can't get its act together. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Would you be in favor of a federal bank account that would, in, they would be able to inject up to $2,000 a month per family member into this account for the rest of the year? I'll link to the article where this is laid out. It's a fascinating read. And look, if Congress doesn't get its act together, I would love to see the Federal Reserve step in here, like put on their big boy pants and say, hey, little kids, while you're over here squabbling, we're going to step in and do something. These are unprecedented times. So when everyone is sitting there saying, like, I would never expect them to do this, they're never going to do this. Did you expect them to pass a $2 trillion stimulus bill at the end of March? Did you expect the Federal Reserve to inject $4 trillion into the economy? I mean, we're talking about a global superpower that is on the edge of collapse if we don't fix this. So I don't know that the Fed is going to want to, on their watch, watch the American, you know, an American superpower collapse economically under the weight of this thing. We wind up like Great Britain, and then China becomes you know, the dominant power for the foreseeable future. We're, we're close. We're close to it.
Let me know in the comments your thoughts about that on the Federal Reserve side. And please subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Love to have you be a subscriber of our channel as we try to bring you uh, financial intelligence, the stuff they never taught you in school on how to take control of your money. What we teach you here on this channel is how to get your money out of this system, which is the government printing money system, and into you know buying gold, buying silver, buying real estate, tangible assets that produce monthly cash flow that are consistent hedge against inflation. That's what we teach you to do here on this channel. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it.